episode of PJ and the Beard. We're having an away game. We are not in the studio. We're actually in uh, our church, and we're here for what I'm dubbing as Pedal Palooza. <laughs> we're going to take a look at our own pedal boards uh, over these next couple episodes, and we're going to look at the beards first, which has been called Ground Control, Mission Control, <laughs> all kinds of uh, names, but uh, Beard's going to kind of do, I can't be as, you know, interesting as John Bollinger, but we're going to do a rig rundown of, uh, of the gears, uh, the Beard's gear. First of all, this is totally awkward for me with you sitting on that side. Yeah, it is kind of weird. Um, <laughs> trying to get over that. So yeah, Pat's right. Um, going to look at this pedal board. I'm going to, before you even see an image of it, just say right off the bat, yeah, it's ridiculous. I get it. Uh, but every week I walk in, I flip three switches and plug in a guitar, right? So that's my load in. Carry a guitar or two in, plug his, them in, and yeah. his biggest choice is what guitar am I going to play this week? Right. Doesn't have to think about anything else. So that's really nice, and I really appreciate that. And it's nice of the church to let us yeah. just kind of leave the stuff set up up here. And we have keys too, so it's nice. Yeah. One thing that's nice, I'm gonna I'm kind of jumping in here real quick, is that you know, oftentimes we're like, oh, we would have that pedal, but it's on our board uh, because that's what we're using. So today you're going to see some of those things. A few things like the Barber Direct Drive, there may be duplicates laying around, but <laughs> some of these things that we talk about and we say, oh, we don't have it here because it's on the board or we have to come yank it off the board to do an episode. So right. this is what the Beard's currently using. Or the things that you see on, if you've ever wondered what you see on an episode actually makes it to where we play every week. Right. I guess now you know. So let's just kind of run the, we'll, we'll pop a picture of the board up, run the single path real quick. So here's the board. <laughs> you just have to laugh. We'll just right? give you a minute to take it all in. Right. There was this whole idea behind this board of being like modular, right? So it's actually three different pieces. So I could like take the center piece home or take an end piece home or something if I wanted to change things. Uh, I rarely, I haven't changed anything because I tried to like. You just build another board if you want something else. Well, I try to like <laughs> wire everything down and make it neat. And that has been horrendous to try and swap things in and out. Although I've done that a little bit. So here we go. Starts over on the right. You have the TL pedal Stinger Fuzz into a Polytune. That goes into the Morley Wah. The Morley Wah goes into this American Loopers um, loop switcher right here. Uh, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. So then the, the chain of pedals would be the Rubber Chicken, Speaker Cranker, the Falcon from Crazy Two Circuits, Barber Electronics Direct Drive, Vertex Boost, Nemesis Delay, I'm um, sorry, it's not right. After the Vertex Boost is that TC Electronics Chorus, and then the Empress Tremolo, then the Nemesis Delay, the DM2W from uh, Boss, and the Waller Slow. And then over here in the corner, on, on the side, mm. is the mm -hmm. wonderful Hughes and Kettner uh, Rotosphere. That's the chain. It's on the board. You have to have a board really big to put the two uh, <laughs> right. on there, but it's right. fantastic. Uh, two things I didn't mention were the were the uh, expression pedal, which I would ha definitely have that mission yeah. EP2 over here right. if we didn't use that on the show all the all time. All the time, right. And the uh, disaster area clock to, for, for tap tempo and stuff. So where do you think? Well, you got your PRS uh, and over is uh, PV Classic 30 into a classic 112E closed back cabinet. Um, just, he'll take pictures of it and put it on somewhere, but it's, so, it's, it's not the Tyler. We didn't drag the Tyler out here. So it should just be maybe a clean tone, right? Yeah. And I, I, I think. <laughs> Which button do you push to make it clean? Everything. <laughs> I think everything's off. James Brown just came to church. And I would say, I will say, you know, Miking this stuff and running it with recorders and stuff is not something we typically do. Right. So if we mess it up, I apologize in advance. All right. Down to the board. Mm -hmm. Where? <laughs> Where do you start? <laughs> um, well, you probably have delays on most of the time, right? True story? Yeah, true story. So maybe you start with the delays and then build on top of them. All right. So basically DM2 on all the time. So... And it's that couple short repeats mm -hmm. on all the time. 
And then the other delay is the Nemesis, and I'm not gonna lie, people are gonna <laughs> be alive. The Nemesis has so much power, such a great pedal, and I really honestly use it for. That's the setting. There are a couple other, I'll go through the other presets, but I rarely use them. So preset number two, Preset number three, which I absolutely love, but I've only ever found an opportunity to use it like once or twice. Which would fit right in with the Shakedown Sound series, right? right? right. <laughs> a little bit of whatever. And then for kind of a tape delay again, but a little bit longer maybe. So that's the delay options. Uh, probably in this section worth mentioning the reverb options, reverb in the amp, but then have the slow here too if, if you want like a little bit of extra reverb. degrade at the end. I mean, it's ambient, but not like a huge giant wash at this point. And the thing I love about that too, it does have that hold feature. So if you right. do like... Approved. I thought you were gonna do a Rick Beato video where you put a drone and then just like play every <laughs> every, every scale. scale known to man. <laughs> Which that's a lot of fun. That's yeah, that's fun. great. It's almost like a looper, almost kind of like it's just a pad that you can explore over. Pad. And what we're using for the drive there was that just the barber or what was that? That was a speaker cranker. Okay. Spe yep. So there we go. So in the drives. Yep. So three drive pedals. For the longest time, all I had was the barber electronics. Roll your volume back to clean it up. Roll it up to get more drive. Uh, in the last maybe year, I've added two other drives. And so the speaker cranker, the Falcon, and the Barber. The Barber's where I live. I'd say the speaker, the the Falcon has that kind of Neil Youngish mm -hmm. kind of, you can't say dirty drive because they're all dirty, but. It's just it's not like, super tight. It's a little, little wooly, little. Nasty yeah. kind of. Yeah. And then the speaker cranker. Has Neil Young to play it. <laughs> right. <laughs> The speaker cranker's not a boost. That's right. Ask Jamie Stillman. Maybe there'll be a clip right here. It's not a boost. Yeah, like I feel like almost at this point is like cartoonish how we try to explain that it's not a booster. Intentionally cartoonish. But it can push the other pedals. It can push the other pedals. And it sounds good on its own. Mm -hmm. It just Yeah, if know. that's all that was when you did that little lead, that sounded great. Because when I'm over there, which we'll get to that in another episode. I'm not sure what all is on over here, uh, but that was the speaker cracker. That sounded really good. Even just that was by itself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll just put on, how about some single notes on all three? I'll just jump back and forth around all three. So we'll do that real quick. Um. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
we did an episode on the Falcon, but just give him like the E minor, like some some Neil Young E chord on that to kind of talk about. The right. other ones are pretty creamy, pretty creamy, pretty smooth, pretty tame. I think, and you're right. When you, I was thinking about that when I started playing with the Falcon, it's more of a rhythm for me. Yeah, it, it gets that kind of. If you want that kind of, who said skank? Can you see skanky <laughs> rhythm in church? We just did. <laughs> I have to put an extra twenty in the offer. were on but of course if it were me they're always on right yeah why not um that's a pretty powerful uh drive section that they're different i think maybe there's a subtlety maybe between the cranker and the barber like maybe but the falcon is a whole nother animal and you can uh mix and match those in several different ways it sounds great yeah i think it's worth because david david barber and i've been talking about a particular circuit that may be part of an upcoming series right easter egg and he's not a big fan of, of said circuit. Of said circuit. Right, right. So it's, but it sounds great with this. But so just real quick, let's do a little bit with the direct drive and then flipping the speaker cranker on and off. Um, So I would say that uh, the barber direct drive is your very refined friend you have over for dinner. And then when you pair it with a speaker cranker, they might try to the tablecloth trick where they try to pull things out. <laughs> yes. But it's still very uh, appropriate. Just pushes it a little bit. Now, if we right. had turned the Falcon over, that dude's going to flip the table over at your party. So just be aware. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much the drive. There is the Vertex Voost there. That's what I, that's what I was going to ask you about. You wanna, you've told me before kind of how you use that, but... But I don't want to say it because I could be wrong, which wouldn't be the first time. So the vertex boost one way, if you're going. Let's see. If you're going from like humbuckers to single coils and you lose a little bit, which you really don't with this guitar. But one thing I would do is use that boost just to like put a little more. on it, I guess. The other way, because it has an expression pedal input, the expression pedal is really the volume pedal. It's now after the drive. So if I need, very rarely do I need like full drive rhythm. Right. But if I would need that and need to be under the vocalist or whatever, I could like kick on the Falcon, kick on the Vertex Boost, which is opposite of what you think you're trying to do. But then the volume pedal over here, you can pull it back. And you're not losing. Yeah, because you can get all that glorious lack of refinement, but down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Kind of give that interesting. Whereas if you use the volume knob on your guitar, like if I have the barber on. Yeah. It cleans up. Yeah, it more. cleans it up. Which it, is why I can leave that on most of the right. time. All right, so uh, modulation really quick, I think. We have the TC course, which is a cheap course pedal and it's good. And 
I think we have an episode about that as well. Some some talk about it because you have mm -hmm. one and four pushed in, right? Yeah. We're not going to change it, but one and four is where he landed. Um, yeah, we're not going to not change it. No, that sounds great. Uh, it, yeah. We don't turn knobs over here. You're right. yeah. <laughs> you press buttons on that one, which was nice. Um, for Tremolo, I went with the Empress. Tremolo, the Empress is really nice. It has a lot of nice features. Uh, if we look at the board real quick, I have the tap tempo and the to set up set up as preset select. So I have two presets. I have a green and an orange preset. Um, and they sound a little different. Um, bit of ramp between them mm -hmm. um the one set up kind of a softer slower and the other one's set up a little faster and a little harder you probably didn't know i had a tremolo on the board uh, you told me because <laughs> i never use it he's the master tremolo i never use it I never use it I, unless you're not here yeah. and on the sundays you're not here typically i will put it on at least once <laughs> Just which makes the like oh that's normal. Which makes the bass player laugh because he knows that I'm doing it exactly where you would do. Right. So that's what. But well, that what else do you have that ramps up and down over there? So the other thing that ramps up and down would be the Hughes and Kettner, um <laughs> rotosphere. It keeps slipping my mind. Two things to talk about, I guess, real quick before we get into that. One is the American Loopers switcher here. So this is you might think it, it's laziness, but. I'm not going to, you know, we're old school. We still read a chart. Right. So you give me a chart every week when I come in. I'm looking at the chart. I want to be able to hit everything on the board without stepping over things. I'm getting older. My coordination isn't what it was 20 years ago. So, like, it's, it's nice to just have just about everything I step on right here in this row. And then you'll see this little box here. That's the rotosphere. It's on and off, and it's fast and slow over there. And over here we have the disaster area clock, which clocks the nemesis, gives the nemesis the time for the delay and also gives the empress the time for the tremolo so that's why i don't have to have the trap the tap on i can just use the pre switch p pre preset switch where's the camera yeah there's two of them Nine. Nine. Over here. so weird um so yeah the rotosphere and you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna throw the direct drive on and just roll the volume back so it has a little bit of stuff to it and the rotosphere for what we do for me Whenever there's something that's building, that's the mm -hmm. perfect pedal because it adds so much tension and it's all about clicking it on, clicking it off, clicking it on, clicking it off and keeping that going. So it sounds- Because we would both love to have a Hammond organ here, but we don't. Well, so that covers that territory. Right. It brings that movement and it sounds great. So we'll start with it off and then we'll kick it on and then we'll go between slow and fast. So red is slow. so good yeah should have bought one when i had a chance yeah just 
maybe one of my, definitely one of my favorite pedals on the board. So I feel like we're down to two, uh, right? The Morley. Well, when we did the drive, we never mentioned the little golden boy over here on no, the corner. No. And there's a reason for that, probably. Because he doesn't get used very much in right. this situation. But it is the TL pedal, Stinger Fuzz. I really love it. It has a mid control on it, I think, which makes it a little unique. And... Um, <laughs> Even the speaker cranker sits nice on top of that. Mm -hmm. The speaker cranker plays really well, I think, with everybody. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's that. What else were you thinking we haven't mentioned? The Morley. Morley. You've had a variety of laws on your board over the years. and So always the switchless. I like the switchless laws because I think the thing you can do with this you don't have to just do like kind of the Jimi Hendrix waka waka thing. You can drop this, sprinkle it in because you don't have to turn it on. Does that make sense? You don't mm -hmm. have to step on it to turn it on. Right. So if you're doing just like that climb thing, if you're doing some kind of climb thing. Um, you know, then you jump back into whatever, but you can just, Real quick. Yeah, you don't have to do the right. You can like I hope I clicked it on, <laughs> and then more importantly, I hope I turned it off. <laughs> Just drop it in places, and it has this cool. Um, it has two cool features on it. It has a wah lock, which you can do like a cock wah. And then it has the woe setting, mm -hmm. which is kind of maybe, it's different. And yeah. we did do an episode on this one as well. Morley's been really kind to us, and uh, this is unique. So. It's a little different. Peter Frampton almost shows up on that. Um, do you feel like I do? So what else? The disaster area clock's pretty cool. You can tap. Ah. We did forget the rubber chicken. How could we forget the rubber chicken? Oh, we did forget that. Tap things in. You also can do like presets. So if you do know what the speed of your songs are going to be, you can program those in and roll for them. I just use it as a tap. I think you're right. The rubber chicken's it. One of the things I like about the rubber chicken here right. is that I can use it with a drive pedal and roll the volume back a little bit, and it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It still quacks. It still does its thing. Yeah. So, like, if we put it on with a speaker cranker, for instance, and we turn it with on. the rubber chicken. <laughs> You, you know, you still mm -hmm. get that crack, but it wasn't all the way up. Mm -hmm. um, even with a barber. Not many opportunities to use that in this setting, but when I can find them, I will take yep. advantage of them. There's, there's a couple of songs that show up in the rotation where that... Uh, so, yeah, I think that's it. There's the little button over here to flip through the Nemesis delays, but I don't think we need to talk about that. It's a mess. The one power supply is falling off the bottom of it. Um, <laughs> you know, there's extra cables floating around. But it, it truly is a pleasure to come in and plug into it every week and play. And I know it so well now. You know, it's... 
It's a beauty. I think that's it. Unless there's something I can't see over there. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> all that's hooked up. So any other any other thoughts before we go? No, I mean that's it. Like I mean he, you know, kind of jokingly feels awkward and feels embarrassed about the size of it. But like you said, if you had a board that you know didn't have to move, what would you do? I mean, why you know why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> why wouldn't you make it as accessible as possible and make it? Yeah, yeah. And just have fun with it and have options. I mean, it, these are all things to inspire your playing and add to a song. And it's really, you know, when you, you take the size of it into consideration, but it's not, there's not a lot going on. It looks like more is going on than I think there is. A couple of drive pedals, a delay sound or two, and a couple of modulations and you're done. Mm -hmm. But, you know. But it's got a little complexity with the vertex and the way you use that uh, as an expression. You've got the, the, the rotosphere switch that's away from the rotosphere and the disaster area. So you can tap in, which does come in handy. Uh, for sure, but it's not like this super program board. And you have some presets in the the Nemesis, but yeah, there's you, not know, a, you can get to what you want pretty quickly. There's no mini programming going on. No. Okay. Life so, might be easier easier if we don't <laughs> like, have to learn MIDI. So. so if nothing else, we've documented this. So yes, when it, it goes away, we'll have we'll have a document. Hopefully, it's not like the Batman movies back in the '80s and '90s where the buildup was like like oh that was it because we've mentioned the monstrosity that is this board. So hopefully, you weren't disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, uh, the 16-ish pedals uh, didn't disappoint you. <laughs> so we always like to take a minute. And thank everybody for watching. Those of you subscribing, clicking the notification bell, hitting the like button, going out to Instagram, Facebook, stop by the website. Uh, big shout out to our members. Mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate them, the people that have clicked the join button down below. That really helps the show, helps us keep doing this. Uh, and this is just, you know, this is kind of the calm before the storm. Um, we're, we're working on a big project that's right. maybe taking us away from some of this, but we're trying to fill in some content why why we wrap up that project and hopefully you'll see that soon right. so with that i'm pj on behalf of the beard reminding no matter what you hear you never have too much gear you could build more sections and be surrounded <laughs>